Should gene editing technologies like CRISPR be regulated? The way it works now is that companies can ask the USDA and the FDA to examine their new products, and the results of these voluntary consultations become public. These firms do not need explicit government approval to sell that product, and the FDA does not consider these gene-edited processes as GMOs. So if you take genes from another kind of plant or bacteria and insert them into a crop, the result is considered a GMO. You need government approval to sell a new GMO. Getting it can take years and many millions of dollars. If you just take a snippet out of one gene without inserting anything new, though, the product falls into this gray area. The European Union has decided that even if you do, it's still a GMO. More and more companies are using CRISPR or Talon technologies. Manat Shahu, the chief commercial officer of Calix, which is based near St. Paul, explains 10PR. It acts as a genetic scissors. They can go in and cut the soybean plant's DNA very precisely. It does the cut, and then the gene comes out. There's no foreign material or foreign genes inserted into the soybean. His company, according to NPR, is using Talon to make a new kind of soybean with oil that's a little healthier more like olive oil that's high in monounsaturated fats. Calix went through this voluntary process with both the USDA and FDA, and both agencies gave the company's high oleic soybean a green light. We think it's important to build consumer trust and also for food safety, which is critical to go through that oversight process, Sahu says. On the other hand, according to NPR, there's a gene editing company called Cybus in San Diego that never asked the USDA or FDA to formally approve its new line of canola. Adding to the confusion is the fact that this canola was created using an older method of creating genetic mutations. The company induced lots of random mutations in canola plants by multiplying them in the lab in petri dishes. Then it searched for and found exactly the mutation it wanted. Crops altered in this way have never been strictly regulated, so Cybus didn't need government approval for its canola. Greg Jaffe, director of the Biotechnology Project at the Center for Science and the Public Interest, told NPR, I don't think Cybus is violating any law, but I think it points out the fact that this is a voluntary process and that in the future companies may not elect to go through this process. He also added, that a lot of consumers will find that unacceptable.